So as we discussed in the previous power lecture, uh, that dynamic programming methods or DP methods are of limited scope, but still they uh, they allow us to learn some of the foundational principles in reinforcement learning, or uh, that would be useful when we discuss practical algorithms. And as we'll discuss later part of the course, uh, that the practical algorithms that we're talking about in particular is the Monte Carlo and the temporary difference learning methods, uh, try to achieve much the same effect as the DP methods. Um, so uh, the the uh, the DP methods. Uh, assume that the perfect transition, uh, that the perfect model of the world of the transition dynamics are available. That is, we have access to P of S prime comma R given S comma I, the joint distribution over the next state reward pair given the present state action um, pair. Uh, so uh, the DP methods assume a perfect model of the world or the availability of the transition dynamics. Um, as we also discussed, DP methods assume that the sufficient model combination is uh, is available, uh, so that we can perform some uh, the updates that the dynamic programming algorithms uh, do, as we'll see uh, shortly uh, hereafter. For the more the last assumption was that the DP methods assume uh, the uh, that the MDP is finite. Um, that is uh, the state set, the reward set, and the action uh, set are all finite. So in this power lecture, we'll learn dynamic programming methods, mostly focusing on computing the value functions and the use of value functions uh, to compute the policies. And this is uh, what is uh, typically done in the reinforcement field at large. The value functions are used to organize and structure the search over the uh, policy space uh, to select, uh, to search the good policies or to compute the good policies or perhaps the optimal policy. So uh, uh, moving forward, as we discussed previously, uh, once we obtain the optimal value functions, uh, we can compute the optimal policies. So we discussed the previous lecture. Uh, once we have the uh, optimal value functions, it can be either the state value function or the state action value function. We can compute the optimal policies. And as we discussed in the previous hour lecture, there can be more than one optimal policy for a task. And usually, uh, such policies uh, are, 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 are stochastic uh, or, or perhaps deterministic as well. So, there can be more than one optimal policy. For an MDP, when we say for an MDP, what we uh, mean is that the underlying problem, uh, the underlying RL problem, is modeled as an MDP. So there can be uh, so when we say there can be more than one optimal policy for an MDP, what we mean to say is that there can be more than one optimal policy for a reinforced learning task that is modeled as an MDP. So there can be more than one optimal policy for an MDP, and all such policies are optimal policies, and they all share the same value functions, Q star of S comma A and V star of S. So all such policies. are known as optimal policy. And they share the same V star and Q star for all state action pair. So, uh, having the knowledge of the optimal value functions, we can compute the optimal policies. Uh, where uh, the uh, we'll just see right the definition of the V star and Q star, the optimal value functions for a state and the state action pair. So, V star, V star of S, the optimal value function uh, for a state, is equal to max over 
a expected value of r t plus 1 plus gamma times v star of s t plus 1 given s t is equal to s a t is equal to a which is equal to so this is q star of s comma a so this is max over a q star of s comma a for all s belong to the state space and a belonging to a of s there is set of all feasible actions in the state s so this is equal to max over a as we discussed previously in the in the, the previous lecture this will sum over all trajectories leading from st and at to s t plus 1 and r t plus 1 so we'll sum over all um, trajectories that leads to different values of these random variables the state action the next state a reward pair and we take into account the probabilities of transitioning to those next state reward pair from state s and action a so this max over a sum over all s prime comma r p of s prime comma r given s comma a times r plus gamma times v star of s prime so as we discussed previously having the knowledge of the value function the state value function we can compute the optimal policy by by setting it to be a greedy policy uh, with respect to the optimal state action uh, to the opt uh, with respect to the optimal state value function so the optimal policy in this case is arc max over a sum over all s prime comma r p of s prime comma r given s comma a times r plus gamma times v star of s prime so having the knowledge of the value function an optimal policy is one step look at search for all possible values of the actions so as we discussed in the previous power lecture if a policy is optimal in one step sense so this is one step look at search uh, then it is guaranteed to be optimal uh, in the long run as well because the optimal value function v star s prime takes into account all future possibilities all future consequences are taken into account uh, in the v star of s so uh, with respect to the optimal policy so by ensuring uh, that the action is optimal in one step sense we are also ensuring that the action is optimal in the long term as well so uh, the optimal policy pi star we denoted by pi star the optimal policy for a state s so this is for all s along the state space s prime belonging to s plus the optimal policy is obtained by uh, so the optimal policy is obtained by one step search over the next possible reward and the optimal state value so we are searching over actions to look for which action leads to the highest expected reward and the state value combined so uh, pi star is obtained by one step search over the next possible reward and the optimal state values so we take into consideration uh, given uh, so we are, we are selecting an action that 
leads to highest expected reward plus the optimal state value for the next state. Similarly, if we have access to Q star, so if you have access to Q star of S comma A, which is the expected reward R T plus one plus gamma times max over A prime Q star of S T plus one comma A prime given S T is equal to S A T is equal to A, which is equal to sum over all S prime comma R P of S prime comma R given S comma A times the reward plus gamma times max over A prime Q star of S prime comma A prime. So having access to Q star, the optimal state action value function, which takes into account all future consequences uh, with best action uh, being taken, uh, all such future possibilities with best action selection are taken into account. So here we are already caching the best possible next state action value. So thus, if you have access to Q star, we don't even have to do one step look at search. We can just query uh, the, the Q star S comma A and obtain the optimal policy to act in any state. So the optimal policy is readily available or obtained Uh, without requiring any search, uh, we can just query the optimal state action value function to obtain the optimal policy. Is obtained without requiring any search. We can obtain it by simply querying the optimal state action value function. So since uh, the optimal state action value function uh, for, for, for a state action pair S comma A, uh, the optimal state action value function already caches in uh, the best possibility. So it takes into account all future uh, consequences given uh, in each state, the best action is picked. So similarly, we can expand Q star, and again there will be max over Q star over S T plus two comma A prime. So we 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 are taking all future possibilities into account, and we're caching in uh, the max possible value in each of those next possible states. Uh, and and since the optimal state value function doesn't cache in these values, so at every state we have to do one step look at search over the best possible next reward and uh, state value, uh, the cumulative value of the uh, next state and the immediate reward and uh, computing their expected value by taking into account the probability of transitioning to those uh, next state reward pair. So since it, it, it does not cash in uh, the best possible values, um, we have to do a one step look at search to look into which action is the best in the present state, having the knowledge of the optimal state value function. Whereas in the optimal state action value function, which caches in all the best future possibilities uh, given the state action uh, pair S comma A, uh, so, there, uh, so therefore we don't have to do one step search. We can just query the optimal state action value function to obtain the optimal policy or compute the best possible action in any state. So the pi star of S is simply arc max over A Q star of S comma A with ties broken randomly. Ties broken randomly. For example, if you find uh, that the best possible value is lambda, which is equal to Q star of S comma A1 is equal to Q star 
of s comma a2 then all such policies pi the assign non zero probability uh, to actions to such actions a1 and a2 are optimal policies for example one policy can deterministically choose a1 and one policy can deterministically choose a2 and there can be third policy which assigns perhaps 0 0.5 0 0.5 probability uh, to selecting a1 and a2 so all such policies are optimal policies here also ties are broken randomly with only difference being here we have to perform one step search and here we have to just query the optimal state action value function. So dynamic programming methods, as we'll uh, discuss shortly, uh, make use of the Bellman equations to compute the value functions or the optimal value functions. So as we'll see later in this lecture, uh, there's, an, uh, there's an idea of generalized policy iteration, which we'll use uh, to start with an arbitrary policy and then uh, the, the value function for that policy is computed and iteratively we compute the better and better policies and better and better value functions for those policies and they limit both pi uh, and the limit the pi converges to pi star with value function converging to v of uh, pi star so the dp methods uh, as we we'll discuss uh, make use of the bellman equations to compute the value functions and or, or optimal value functions so dp methods make use of the Bellman equations to compute the value functions or optimal value functions. So next, we'll consider a prediction problem where we compute the value function for a policy. So the uh, so policy is assumed to be given. So we'll uh, learn a DP method to compute the value function for a policy. Use the Bellman equation for, for the value functions for a policy pi. So this algorithm is known as, so we'll discuss an algorithm, policy evaluation. So we'll consider a prediction problem so prediction problems are the problems where we have to compute. So prediction problems So prediction problem is computing the value function for a policy pi and similarly q pi of s comma n. So this is a prediction problem where we are predicting the value, we are estimating the value of state or the state action so we are computing the state value function or the state action value function given a policy pi. So we'll uh, we'll consider prediction problem where we will compute the value function, use the Bellman equation for the value function for policy pi. Uh, so this algorithm is known as the policy evaluation. So we are computing the value function of a policy. So we are computing here the value function for policy. So in a sense, we are evaluating the policy. So essentially, we are evaluating a policy. And thus, uh, it's known as policy evaluation. So we'll discuss it in the next part of the lecture.